Can you hear me at the back? Loud and clear, Admiral. That is the voice of a man who lived a life not many had the courage for. An Admiral who was bold, demanding, dedicated, inspirational, father figure, compassion, honest, rectitude, a sailor's Admiral. मेरे लिए भगवान Admiral Ronald Linsdale Pereira the Navy's 9th chief was born in 1923 to Major and Mrs John Pereira youngest of four children Ronnie was educated at St Joseph's Darjeeling and St Edmund's College Shillong At school Ronnie discovered his love for sports and the services In 1943 He volunteered for the Royal Indian Navy and was commanding motor launches in the Burma campaign. After the war, Ronnie specialized in gunnery and undertook numerous staff and afloat appointments. A true gunner, he always shot straight. It was way back in 1952 that I had my first encounter with Lieutenant Commander Ronnie Pereira. He was commanding a guard of honor meant for General Kariyappa, the then Chief of Army Staff, who was visiting Cochin. My Sea Cadets were also part of the guard, and I was escorting General Kariyappa past my unit. At that time, I felt a sneeze coming, and my hand automatically crept towards my pocket for a handkerchief, and I felt a sharp rap on my hand, and a hoarse whisper, which certainly did not sound complimentary. I choked on my sneeze. All was well after that. While at tea, I was still smarting under the insult of being hit on the hand. Who do I see striding towards me but the guard commander himself? And I said, "Oh my God, another reprimand!" But he came towards me, put his hands on my shoulders, and said, "Well done, lads. On parade, keep your bloody hands where they bloody well belong." And that was the beginning of my lifelong friendship. Commander Arul Pereira joined INS Delhi in 1958. as the executive officer immediately we could see that he was one with the crew i along with two others was a lowly sub lieutenant trying to get our watchkeeping tickets yet he treated us with kindness always once he and three of us were late for lunch by 5 minutes he insisted that the mess be closed on time And in consideration for the three lowly sub lieutenants, he took us in a taxi to Berry's at Church Gate for our lunch. That was Ronnie. In 1967, Captain Pereira took command of the Navy's pride, INS Delhi. Admiral Pereira was a hard taskmaster, and he was hard with himself too. I understand that as commanding officer of INS Delhi, he kept a diary. in which he noted various activities and he was quite self critical acknowledging his own mistakes if there were and he encouraged his officers to go through that diary it's not easy for a commanding officer to share his uh, weaknesses with his subordinates but admiral pereira had the strength of conviction the self confidence i would say and the intellectual honesty to be able to do so in 1970 Commodore Pereira took over as deputy commandant at the National Defence Academy. Here, he would shape future leaders for the three services. Ronnie sir played hockey for the Navy. Phyllis Mem represented Bombay. Their love for the game blew them into matrimony, and they made a perfect couple. Phyllis and Ronnie had no children, so they adopted us cadets. they taught us so much of course at times ronnie sir pushed us hard interestingly singer endurance high in nda was his idea although a punishment it gave us confidence to face life's challenges it was 4th august 1971 when i dared to interrupt the deputy commandant he gave me a hard scare and i knew the punishment was coming but i got away because my face reminded him of his late nephew flying officer michael pereira who was killed in an air crash in hashimara he was 22 within a week cadet sant pratap singh bhalla became mike bhalla 
at the part of Pereira household. For the next 22 years, he was a father and a very tough mentor to me. I did not make the boat to Hofkern in 1991. Tony Pereira said, son, I cannot help you, but I will pray for you. Luckily, his prayers were answered and I made the grade. For Ronnie Pereira, life was black and white. There was no convenient grey zone. On promotion to flag rank, Admiral Pereira was appointed Fleet Commander of the Eastern Fleet. In 1973, when I was in Bombay, I was transferred to Admiral Pereira to the Fleet Office in Vishakhavutnam. So, I heard that he is a very tough officer. I was scared of him. And when I was in the Fleet Office, I saw him in a totally different kind of person. So, in the morning, he had to get up at 5 o'clock, make tea, और खुद भी चाय पीनी और संतरी को भी चाय पलानी उन्होंने और वो कभी भी बाहर जाते थे टूर पे जाना उन्होंने तो अपने स्टाफ के लिए कुछ ना कुछ कुछ ना कुछ लेके आया करते थे और मेरे को भी एक की चेन लेके आए थे जो कि मैंने अभी तक अपने पास रखा हुआ है और उनके जैसा आदमी मैंने आज तक नहीं देखा है एडमिरल परेरा वॉज कम्पैशनेट बट नॉट सॉफ्ट स्ट्रिक्ट बट फेयर वुड बी एन अप्रोप्रिएट डिस्क्रिप्शन I remember him as the fleet commander in Vizag when I was a young officer and tragically at that time the Navy lost a few officers in two-wheeler accidents. Wearing helmets was made compulsory and Ronnie P implemented this rule ruthlessly. I was one of the transgressors and he gave me hell. The punishment was draconian. This may not have earned him many friends but it sure saved many lives. In 1976, the Pereiras moved back to Mumbai as Ronnie was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the Western Naval Command. Admiral Pereira empowered his commanding officers irrespective of their ranks. A young lieutenant would get the same attention that the carrier captain got. How did he do that? He gave them unfettered access to the chair and he ensured that the staff officers ashore were held accountable for the material weaknesses of the ship. That's how Ronnie turned his commanding officers into tigers. In 1979, Admiral Pereira took over as the Navy's ninth chief of naval staff. On his watch, 14 new ships including indigenous frigates Taragiri and Vindhyagiri, were commissioned. He was also involved in setting up INS Chilka, where Agniveers are trained today, as also the naval base at Karwar. Ronnie's foresight in setting up units focused on operational analysis laid the foundation of a future-proof navy. I interacted with Admiral Pereira in connection with the APSO sonar development program. The APSO program ran into some very difficult times and I reached out to him for help. He took some very tough and risky decisions that led to the success of the APSO project. His courage, his integrity and his compassion for others was an inspiration to me personally and to all who followed him in the Indian Navy. After 39 years, Admiral Pereira swallowed the anchor and bid adieu to his first love. Although my association with Admiral Ron Pereira was less during his active service days, we became very close after he retired and settled in Bangalore. What amazed me the most was his uncompromising stand on principle. He was prepared to go at any length, even at the cost of his career. He advised me, Peter, if you are right, dig in. My heart brims over with gratitude my husband and I got to hold his hands while he gave up his spirit. Rest in peace, dear Admiral. When history judges Ronnie, it will of course record the big things. But I hope we also remember an admiral who arrived for a party on his scooter rather than the staff car. 
a man who never hesitated to roll up his sleeves to get the job done, who overcame so many odds and through them all, charged on relentlessly. In spite of the pressures, the pulls and the challenges at the top, not once did Admiral Pereira lose his moorings. He truly was more than the sum of his voyages. The finest tribute we can pay is to take ownership of his moral compass and live by it. Rank is transient, character permanent.